unwinding road throughout the South Jersey playoffs, but championship week is finally here. Championship week tip-offs today at Eastern High School, where today, in the Group 3 Boys Championship, the Ocean City Red Raiders take on the Middle Township Panthers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ed Bankin, along with Tad Kazaneski. Very happy to be here at Eastern High School. And Tad, so are the Ocean City Red Raiders. Ocean City, we knew this was a good team, a dangerous team, but they shocked a lot of people by beating Lakewood. A lot of people didn't expect to see Ocean City here, but here they are. Well, and that's the first thing they have to get out of their head, that they're very happy to be here. If the coach did what my coach did back when we played for the state title, as guys, we are here to win. We're not happy to be here. And I think that's the most important thing these Ocean City players have to take out on the floor. They know they already lost the middle once this year. Already by 20, they have to forget about it. They're here for one game. Winner takes it all, and you have to convince yourself that you can beat a very strong team. This is the first time since 1972 that Ocean City will be playing for a championship. On the other hand, for Middle Township, this is old hat. This is the Panthers' 10th straight trip to the group championship, in this case, again, group three for Middle Township. Tad, they won five out of nine. They said they were, quote, unquote, rebuilding, but the Panthers are back again. And they're almost the kind of team that expects to be here. And that's the kind of team I look to start early in this game and really take on Ocean City. Ed, we talk about in every playoff game we do. I'm going to bring it back out again. The first three to four minutes of this game, Ed, are crucial for Ocean City today, more so for Middle Township. Ocean City needs to get off to a good start. You think about that girls game we did with St. Joe's and St. James. St. James got off to a good start, and it made for a very close game. Well, you see there's a lot of Middle Township fans here. The Ocean City bus load is on its way as well. For the Red Raiders, one thing they've had is a proven star, Mike Rowell. He's done it all. But now, Tad, particularly from the center position, they're getting a little more support. Yeah, they have Ferrari in its center from Brazil. He comes into this team. So, surprise, he lands out on your doorstep. And he's done a great job of helping his team get here. He can rebound. He can block shots. And he puts the ball on the hoop. He's got to come up big for Ocean City to win today. Well, a lot of people didn't expect the Red Raiders to be here, but here they are. A lot of people expected Middle Township to be here. Here they are. It's a great storyline for what should be a great championship game. Ocean City and Middle Township battling for the crown in Group 3. Coming up next, right here on TSM. Ed Bank and Tad Kazaneski back here at a loud Eastern High School. Neutral site for the Group 3 championship. The Middle Township fans are certainly ready. As Middle Township and Ocean City are ready to go, and Tad, a true story of the heavy underdog versus the favorite. We've hyped it up. And certainly we expect a game that will be a, a noisy one crowd-wise, but also will have a, a lot of ramifications as far as how these teams start. I think you said at the start tonight is the key. Ocean City has to start the game off on a positive note and prove that they can hang with Middle Township. Middle Township's crowd, though, is loud and proud. And it has been a little difficult for these teams because they've had to come from such a far distance. And when you keep in mind that school lets out sometime after 2.30, a lot of the crowd is just arriving. Well, they are introduced to the starting lineups. So first, we'll check the starting lineups for the Ocean City Red Raiders. In the backcourt, they go with the three-guard lineup. Jade Toscano, Mike Rowell, and Justin Granger. Ryan Reich will be in one forward spot. And Gil Ferrari at the center spot. And there is Mike Rao, four points away from becoming the all-time leading scorer in Ocean City history. He averages about 14 points a game, Ed. He's a senior, he's had an outstanding career. He's going to break the record of Homer Baker, who set the record back in 1982. And there you see the Red Raiders getting ready for what is, without question, the biggest game of their lives. And again, Ed, you just have to convince yourself that you can win this game. You can't just be happy to be here. Well, that's the Ocean City lineup. They are introducing Middle Township. And we will introduce it with you as you see the Panthers cover the court, ranked seventh in South Jersey, making their 10th straight Group 3 championship for Bears. Lawrence Lee and Brian Allen make up the backcourt. Marcus McNeil at one forward spot. Steve Corrado, double zero on the other forward position. And John Ashlow, the Toronto native, at the center position for Middle Township. So we've got a little foreign exchange going to the pivot. So the players being introduced here. Again, Ocean City not even ranked in the top 20, even going into this week, despite their victory over Lakewood. But that... They've already proven they can win in a hostile environment. Obviously, a lot of Middle Township fans here. 
and certainly it'll be a neutral site, but it's certainly a situation where it is a pressure situation which Ocean City has been through before. And now we will rise for the national anthem. as the players continue to get ready for what should be the biggest game of their lives, as we mentioned. Middle Township and Ocean City set to go. We're going to be joined all afternoon by Mickey V on the sideline. Mickey's on the sidelines right now to fill us in on some of the goings-on of the game. Go ahead, Mickey. Thanks, Ted. Well, I spoke to both coaches prior to the tip-off here. Coach John Bruno, happy to be here, of course, because we heard all the political maneuvering trying to get him out as coach. He's back. He said that Lakewood win extremely big because it gave him the confidence they could beat a team like Middle. However, he said the key feels they need to control Middle's guards as well. They also must keep their big guy out of trouble. Now, Coach Tom Farrakis said any time you're in the South Jersey final, there's a lot of energy. He just hopes this team has more energy, although he feels there's two subplots. The John Bruno story, but also Mike Rowell looking to set the all-time scoring record here at Ocean City. Just have to see how things go. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, Mickey, thank you very much. And turning it over for play-by-play -play of the first half is Tad Kazaneski. And the tap is quickly run by Middle Township. Or check that Ocean City. They'll go from our left to our right. They're in the red uniforms. Middle and the home white will go from right to left. So we'll see how Ocean City can start early on in this game. They'll be shooting right into a hostile Middle Township crowd. Picked up on the end line and out of bounds against Lawrence Lee. Better not lift your head up for a second against this Panther defense. Lawrence Lee, quick to the basketball, Rao a little late in going over to get it. We'll keep an eye on Rao and we'll see if he gets the four points if they stop for any reason whatsoever. Just underway here on TSM, Tack Kazaneski, Ed Bacon with you. Group three South Jersey Championship game. We're having all kinds of trouble inside there. They'll get it back out. Great defense here for middle. Ed, they can go nowhere right now. But Ocean City, no hurry as well. Rowles has that stolen away. And Township will bring it back. That was Allen who stole it. Township to set things up. Baseline with it is Ashelou, and he is fouled. Well, Ashelou going strong to the basket. And that's going to be his game against Ferrari. He's just going to go strong to the basket, try with the power move. If Ferrari had the big game against Lakewood, but keep in mind that as strolled as Lakewood was, they were a team which featured a small lineup, a lot of quick shooting guards. This will be a much tougher test for him today. John Ashley, who averages 13 points a game. Always tough to shoot that first foul shot, Ed. Watch it again right there. Just a strong drive. That's what Ashley's going to do. Just goes right to the basket with a quick first step for his size. Got tremendous court presence around the hoop. Our first point of the night for John Ashelou. one nothing Middle Township. We'll see how the Red Raiders go again offensively. They couldn't find anybody open, but as we said, they're also in no hurry. They will probably look to slow it down today. Rowell lost the handle, but it went off a middle player. There's Mike Rowell. So many great moments in his career at Ocean City. Got over the 1,000-point barrier in a hurry the first game this year. And as we said, four away from the school mark. Stolen away by Middle. Here's Maker. Good dish off to McNeil. McNeil for two. 
just as much as Ocean City wants to keep it at their pace, Middle Township wants to run if the numbers are there. They are excellent on the transition. 3 nothing. Middle leads it. 10-footer, kaboom. Ryan Reich on the basket, his first two, he's a junior. Right back at him, shot missed by McNeil. Good rebound on the play by Granger. Chance to take the lead here. Granger shot no good, nice rebound, Ashelou. They run right back with it, here's Allen. Middle wasting no time at all. Lee drives baseline, spins off the glass, yes. You said it, wasting no time. Lawrence Lee with a quick spin move to the basket. Ocean City, we saw the rush shot right there. It was an open shot, but as we said, Red Raiders have to keep it at their tempo. Middle number five in South Jersey come in 23 and four. There's a three-pointer for Reich. It's no good. Reich, good hustle to tie it up. It's still loose and picked up by Granger. Boy, he had to grab that from behind his back, sitting on the floor to feed that back out. Good drive. Reich picks up his dribble. They'll set it up now with Toscano. Ferrari, rejected, swatted away by Ashelou. Good job by Ferrari to get it back. Loose ball, middle comes away with it. Here's Allen. Allen spins, and he turned it over. That's great double teaming by Ocean City. Jay Toscano in there, getting some help as well as the Red Raiders collapse and force that turnover. Good non-call, no foul. Ryan Reich, nice job defensively. 5-2, middle leads it. Here's Ferrari. Nowhere to go. Granger swings it around. Far corner, three-pointer, short. Ferrari had it and lost it, coming away to this Corrado. Morales got the green light to shoot from anywhere, and he will continue to do so. They need him to be a, a bit of a ball hog, if you will. Be aggressive and take the shots. Asu lost it out of bounds, but they'll keep it. Press so far with Ocean City when they don't catch middle of the transition. When middle has to go on the half-court offense, they're double-teaming down low along the baseline, so for Tom Paracco, his big men don't really have any room to go. Tipped away and brought in by Rowell. Three-pointer can tie it. Rowell, coast-to-coast, coast, reverse for two. First two for Mike Rowell, who's two away from the all-time lead at Ocean City. And that's the senior at his finest. Great cut underneath. One-point lead, Middle Township, here in the first quarter. Just about the halfway point of the first quarter, and Ocean City hanging tough, and I think that's a big sign early on. McNeil. Now Corrado. Stolen away by Ocean City. Here's a break. Rowell, and on that basket, he's the all-time leader at Ocean City. Great job by Rowell, the crowd knows it, but a great play by Ryan Reich to set it up, gets the strip, and right away looked up and had the court presence to find Rowell. The Ocean City fans acknowledge it. Three-pointer brings the lead back for Brian Allen. Well, John Bruno said there would not be any stoppage of the game, wouldn't be any kind of celebration for him tying the school record or breaking it, so he wants to get, flow the game to continue. Toscano drove and was fouled. And you said it, Dad. You, what you said at the top was it was important for Ocean City to right away play like they really belong here, not with the feeling like, hey, nobody expected us to be here. We're the heavy underdogs. We in the media look at it that way, but playing very well so far. Watch the play inside, and right there, almost got a ball, but enough did Allen to get the foul. 8-6, Middle Township leads it. 3.35 to play first quarter. Here's a three for Toscano. Kaboom! better is this Ocean City team when the rest of the players do what they've been doing through much of this season and that's give Rowell some point. It was all Rowell last year but everybody steps up now. Jumper missed by Lee. Nice rebound underneath and almost a chance for a three-point play for John Ashelou. Well he is a physical specimen underneath and he just had the position that time and was able to get to the basket but as we said, Ocean City, right where they want to be early on. There it is. A couple of fouls in there, actually, and they finally, I believe, you saw that last reach in by Rao. That's what they call. Ashlu can't make that as a team. They're one for three. Ashlu averages 13 points a game. This is for the tie. No good. Big rebound, Ferrari. 
9-8, Red Raiders lead it. They have the ball. Three minutes, five seconds to play first quarter. Ferrari spins. And we get a foul underneath the basket. Might be offensive against Ferrari. That's what it is. And, and we've said it before, we don't like to nitpick as far as officiating, but that's a tough call for what is his second personal foul. Got to let these guys bang around a little bit underneath. That was called by Jim Loper, the one official there. As you see Ferrari on the bench, he's not happy. Our other official today, Steve Shinkarik. That's a very costly foul. So even though Mike, Mike McAlarnon, who's a capable replacement, steps in, it's tough to put your big man on the bench midway through the first. Middle trails it by one. They have the ball. You can see middle real patient. Corrado now. Try the other side of the floor. Good defense for Ocean City here. Baseline on the end line, Ocean City ball. Boy, that's been the key so far in this first quarter. Why Ocean City has stayed close. Once again, the double teaming along the baseline. The Panthers have no room to maneuver. Granger dishes off. Jumper from 10, no good. But good job to rebound it by Rallo, who now has six. And that's another thing Rallo does so well. The all-around players, if they're small, they can jump up and rebound. If they're tall, they shoot from the outside. That's what makes a great player, somebody who can do everything. Two minutes to go, first quarter, 11-8, Ocean City. Remember, they lost the first time these two teams met, 63-42. Nice pass, near side. McNeil, he lost it on the end line. Ocean City ball once again. Well, that one game they played early in the year, first of all, you can throw that out with the way Ocean City's played in this tournament. But secondly, three of the four quarters of that game were even. It was one bad quarter in which Middle Township outscored the Red Raiders 29-6. Other than that, it was an even game. Both coaches stressed that when we talked to them this weekend. Three-point lead, Ocean City, 130 to play in the first quarter. Crowd starting to get in for both teams. Here's a steal, almost stolen back. It's on the end line, Middle Township ball. So right now, Ocean City, you said it before, they don't look like a team that feels like they're just happy to be here. They feel like, uh, I guess, after beating Lakewood and after playing the way they have, they can beat anybody, and, and of course there's a reverse effect. You play a team like middle, you get beat by 21 points, you're anxious to get another crack at them to prove that you belong. 120 to play first quarter, three point lead, Ocean City. Two pointer McNeil. McNeil almost gets it back, and he lost it out of bounds. So good defense again by the Red Raiders, and you know, Ocean City, I think they were started out patiently on the offensive end, and now they've been a little more aggressive. They're breaking the middle township trap, and they're going to the basket a bit faster. A little more than a minute to play here in the first quarter on TSM. South Jersey Group 3 championship game. So far, Ocean City doing all they could expect to do here. Nice move, and banked home by Reich. Ryan Reich, the junior, with four. Well, what a start for this junior. He's not only done a lot scoring-wise, but he's created, he's been passing the ball well, and he's been a big part of the double teaming. Five-point lead, Ocean City. Final 35 seconds of the first quarter. McNeil, they cut him off baseline. Great defense for Ocean City thus far. Again, forcing middle to play on the perimeter. Nothing open inside. Getting into Ashalu, fights, grabs his own rebound, back up, misses. Gets it back again, and he is fouled by Grander, who will pick up his first. Well, that time, that was all Ashley, who is just unbelievable underneath the boards. But again, he had to really work for that shot. Two players right there, but a great job by Ashley to go after the basketball. There Karate. it is again right there, and you see finally the reach-in coming by Granger right there. Oh, <laughs> Got a little bit of the finger, but enough for the foul. Also took a whack to the head. Final 12 seconds, first quarter. Whistle before the shot. This could be an offensive foul. Possibly against Maker. And it is. That's his first. And the team's third. Final nine seconds, first quarter. Four seconds. 
Rowell just before the buzzer. Nope, still had it in his hands. It will not count. We have played one quarter here from Eastern High School. 13-8, Ocean City, the underdog, leads it. Welcome back to Voorhees, New Jersey, here on TSM. Tad Kozineski, Ed Bankin with you as we start the second quarter. Ocean City leads it 13-8. to And Tad, uh, you couldn't have asked for a better first quarter if you're Ocean City. Not only did they shoot the ball well, but uh, again, the way they played defensively, I think surprised Middle Township a little bit. The one negative for the Red Raiders so far, the two fouls against Gil Ferrari, it's going to be up to Mike McElarn to step in. And he'll probably play a lot of the minutes here, maybe even the entire second quarter if he continues to play well. So second quarter action just underway. Ocean City by five. This is a three for Allen, and it's quickly a two-point lead. That's his second three-pointer of the game. And they can't leave him open. They have been able to force the Panthers to play along the perimeter, but you can't give him an open look. They catch and they shoot with a quick release. Two-point lead, Ocean City. Just underway here, second quarter. Man-to-man -man defense for middle. Toscano now. Ocean City real deliberate. Reich for three. Kaboom! Ryan Reich now with seven. And Ocean City is making the extra pass, finding the open shooter. That's great ball movement, and they're shooting the ball with confidence. 16-11, Red Raiders. Nice drive, off the glass, too hard by Lee. Nice rebound, Ashalu, and he puts it home. John Ashalu with three. That's just tough luck that time for Ocean City as they had two players fighting for the basketball. On the break, right? He'll settle it up. 6.30 to play first half, three-point lead, Ocean City. Looking to go inside, and it'll be Ocean City ball. Well, we saw Ocean City early in the year losing to Atlantic City, but that was without Ryan Reich, and you see what a difference he makes on the court. A couple of big threes in this one already. Nice drive and a spin. Toscano, and he gets it to fall. Jay Toscano with five. And Ocean City in the paint, attacking Middle Township, aggressive to the basket once again. Five-point lead once again for Ocean City. Middle from the perimeter. Corrado now in the corner. Ed, they're not looking to go anywhere inside. Haven't been able to. Nice touch pass to Corrado. Corrado for three. Kaboom. And there's the mistake. The same mistake they made when Allen's open for the three. They've clamped things down inside. McElhorn and steps back. And another middle township Panther knocks down a three. Ocean City by two. 540 to play first half. Toscano penetrates. They get the open three in the corner. It's short. Nice rebound, McNeil. Good job that time by middle, particularly Corrado, to come back, get his hand in the face on the shot. Two-pointer can tie it here for middle with 5.20 to go in the first half. Ocean City, City still holding in their zone. Backdoor pass knocked down by McLarnan. And that's because Ocean City did a better job that time of denying the shot from the perimeter. Rowell and Reich rushing the shooter, forcing the bad pass. We're at the five minute mark here in the first half. Rowell. Backdoor pass, Reich puts it home. Nine points for Ryan Reich. Beautiful feed inside by Rowell. He stepped up his passing game this year, certainly dishing out the ball as well as he's shooting it. Four-point lead, Ocean City. Corrado inside. Tie up and a jump ball. Toscano, a great job to get in there. And on the possession arrow, Ocean City ball. There he is, Jay Toscano. Makes the great play going for the basketball, very aggressive. And now we have a timeout, so uh, Ocean City off to a 20-16 lead, playing with plenty of confidence, 
so far in this game. All right, let's go down court side. Mickey V, what do you got? Thanks, Dad. When you look out on the court here, really, you can see the, really the change of high school basketball, sort of an international, really, complexion out there. We've got Gil Ferrari, an exchange student from Brazil, and, of course, John Angelo, who transferred from Toronto also, of course. St. Augustine's got Andrew Sullivan from London as Babalu. We'll talk to Rich Marcucci, director of Cape Atlantic Kanks, more about that change of complexion in high school basketball when we get another time out. Back to you guys in the booth. Thanks, Mick. 4.31 to go here. First half ed, Ocean City leads it by four. And a, a near perfect game for them so far. They're getting the balance. They're doing the job defensively. And for the Middle Township side right now, I mean, this is a team that as a lot of people said early in the year, wondered just how good they were going to be this season. They've certainly earned a chance to be in this spot. However, now they're facing a team that blew them out early in the year. They're down by four. We'll see how they keep the composure. Every minute they hang in the game, it's going to be tougher for middle. As that shot's buried by Rowell, he has eight. There's Rowell. He's got the opening. If you give Mike Rowell a little bit of room in that paint, he will catch and shoot like he did there. Middle trailing it 22-16. Corrado thought about three. Trying to get it inside if they can, but nothing there against the zone. A three for Allen. Kaboom. Brian Allen now with nine. Four three-pointers, and Allen had, as we said before, just a little bit of time to catch and shoot. Right back at him, five feet, footer no good. Corrado on the rebound. Three-pointer can tie it here. Spinning, putting it home is Lawrence Lee. And this is what Middle hasn't been able to do throughout much of this half is run. If they get on the transition, this is their game, and that's where Ocean City could be in trouble. One-point lead, Ocean City. 3.20 to play in the first half. Going to get a hand-check foul defensively against Lawrence Lee. That's his first. That, if you're a basketball fan, you're here neutral. I really like the way the flow of this game. Hasn't been too many stoppages. Both teams playing a sound, fundamental game so far. And we only have seven total fouls in the game with three minutes to go in the first half. Ocean City by one. Good drive baseline here. McLaurin in, and he puts it in. Don't ask me how that went in, but it did. Mike McElarnon, not afraid to go in against the big boys. He goes strong against Ashelo. Red Raiders attacking the basket well tonight. Three-point lead, Ocean City. Under three minutes to go, first half. Penetrating McNeil. No good. Tough underneath is Oslo, but he loses it and out of bounds. Well, a great job by Jason Granger to get that basketball. Oslo, not a happy camper right now. And he's being warned, as you see him upset by the official. That's a great job of positioning by Granger underneath. He gets the basketball. Oslo, fortunately, he did get a loose ball foul. You see right there, he's going for the ball. And there's the block from behind. Great play by Brian DiDonato. Live action. Lee steals it right back. He now has six. It's a one-point lead for Ocean City. They break the pressure. Granger. Looks to go inside. May have lost it. It was out of bounds. Still Ocean City ball. A couple of changes in there for Ocean City. You saw Brian DiDonato in the game. DiDonato, of course, the outstanding football player. He just agreed to go to Cornell for college football, so he'll be playing in the Ivy League for a team which usually is in the thick of the league race. Get the ball into Dalton. Dalton into the game for the first time. One point lead, Ocean City. Open for three. Air ball. Hatting him for a second was McElarnan. And a foul is called. That's a great play by McElarnan to get in there, though. He could see that ball going low. And it wasn't going to touch the rim, so he races in there and gives Ocean City another chance. McNeil picked up his first, the team's fifth. Neither team close to shooting here, each with only four team fouls. So haven't seen uh, too many free throws. Four for Ashlo, and that's been it. Good jumper here. Rowell, no good. Here comes a break. McNeil knocked away. What a defensive play by Mike Rowell, but it's still middle ball. Well, that's an unbelievable play by Rowell coming back. And he, not only to get to that ball, but to knock it away cleanly from McNeil. McNeil was thinking showtime. Rowell does a great job to take it away. Middle Township maintains. Township can take the lead here. 15-footer. No good off the shot of Lee. 
coming our way and out of bounds. And a frustration right now, I think, for Middle Township is building a little bit. Uh, Ashlo in particular, he is really working hard in there, and he's had to bang around and get an opportunity to try and find a way to get some room, but there's just nothing there but red jerseys. Ryan Wright checks back into the game for Granger. Raul pulls it out. Three-pointer for Dalton. Kaboom! His first three of the game. That's his specialty. That's what he's in there for. And he got an open look. Four-point lead, Red Raiders of Ocean City. 139 to play in the first half. Dalton's a 33% three-point shooter, has the most attempts on the team. Backdoor pass, Corrado for the layup. He has five. 125 to play first half. Two-point lead, Ocean City. Three-pointer again, Dalton. They fight for the rebound. Good job to come away with that by Di Donato. Dalton maybe a little too long that time for the three, but almost knocked it down. Reich swings it back out for Dalton. And a travel. Turnover right there, but you see it on the second shot, too, by Dalton. These players are not afraid. They want the ball. They want to shoot. It's a good sign for this Ocean City team. Final minute seven to play here in the first half. The South Jersey Group 3 championship game. Back into the game, Jason Granger, a senior. Well, Ocean City is going to go into halftime right in the thick of this, if not with the lead. And the key right now, minute seven left, is not to let Middle get that spurt to take the lead and stretch it out a little bit. Jay Toscano also just checks in for Dalton. One minute to go, first half. Two-pointer can tie it up. Aliyub Corrado, and we're tied at 27. Well, as well as the Red Raiders have played down low defensively, they've had a couple of breakdowns, and Corrado's been able to take advantage. You think of Lee and Allen and Ashulu, and he's the guy that gets left open sometimes. Raul pulls it out, 35 seconds to play, first half. Looks like they're spreading the floor here, might be holding. Reich might have got away with the walk, too hard off the glass, rebounded by Allen. 25 seconds to go, first half. Lee goes inside. McNeil, he goes inside. Corrado, shot short. Taken away by Di Donato. Final 15 seconds, first half. 10 seconds. Granger swings it out. Five seconds. Toscano swings it out. Three-pointer, no good. They almost fouled him on the shot by Granger, but that will do it. We are halfway through the South Jersey Group 3 Championship game, tied at 22. Ed Bacon and Tad Gazineski back here at Eastern High School. One half complete in the South Jersey Group 3 Boys Championship. Ocean City, the underdogs, tied with Middle Township at 27. The fear that a lot of underdogs have going into a championship just isn't there for this team. It really seems to be, because, you know, I think part of it is a lot of players, a lot of fans out there really didn't expect Ocean City to be here, and some people didn't expect Coach John Bruno to be here for the start of the season. He's done just that. It's kind of almost like they, they have nothing to lose. They don't want to lose the game. They, don't, they want to be here. They want to win, but they have the opportunity to go out there and play and have some fun. We're in the middle. The pressure's all on them, Ed. Absolutely, Mickey, and we are just about ready for tip-off here in the second half. Of course, Middle Township to get here had to defeat Willingboro on the road in the semifinals. Some controversy there as well. Middle wins 58-54, but we know there were some fights in the stands. Things got a little ugly, and, uh, you know, for Middle Township to get through that, that's a difficult task for any high school team to have to survive. And, and let's credit the staff here at Eastern High School, Ed. I mean, there are all kinds of security and police all over the place. There you see one of Voorhees' finest, and the crowd has been very well behaved here today. I mean, they are out in numbers here at Voorhees. And you can see uh, Frank McAleer, the outstanding athletic director here, sparing no expense to make sure it is a safe environment. That's what we've had so far, just a great championship game. And here we go, Middle Township, the favorite team, going from left to right as we start the second half in the home white. Now Allen swings it, looking to penetrate. Allen gets the return pass, fires and hits the three. And Middle Township goes up by three. Allen has been tough from three-point land, Eddie. He averages about 12 points a game. He has that right now. 30 to 27, Panthers. Their first lead since their 1-0 lead, or rather their 8-5 lead early in the game. Ranger in trouble. Round down the baseline. Tough dribbling, forces it up and misses, and the rebound comes to Ashlow. Ball almost knocked away. It is taken away by Rao. He goes up and lays it in. 
thought about, thought about showtime, but changed his mind. Big break for Ocean City there. They probably got away with the foul as Ashley picked it up, but they picked his pocket. Allen feeds to McNeil on the near baseline. Ashley, nice spin move. Fade away is good. You can't teach that kind of stuff, Ed. You just have to have a nose to the basket, and Ashley has that. And he has five points as well. 32-29, Middle Township. Fifth seeded Red Raiders. Big underdogs coming today, not even ranked in the top 20. Middle Township ranked seventh. Reich fires for three. That's too strong. Had the open look, missed. Battle for the rebound. Ferrari can't get it, and it comes away to Lee, and he'll look to run. Lee takes the return, feed, and misses the layup inside, but he's fouled. Ocean City Ed has to be very careful on a miss because middle looks to sprint right up the floor. They did it there and got a very easy shot if it wasn't for the foul. Brown picks up his first personal foul. That's a coach who's into the game and he's done a great job throughout his career. As we look at it again, right into your living room, they get the foul just beforehand. And the first free throw is good by Lee. Middle Township now two for four from the free throw line. Ocean City yet to attempt a free throw. Second one spins out and Ferrari has the rebound, knocks it away, but maintains possession. 33-29 middle. Let's see what Ocean City can do here as they spread the floor. They've had a couple bad shots the last time down. Piscano has his pass taken away by Allen. Allen feeds to McNeil, layup is no good, he misses it again. And Ocean City's got the rebound as Toscano takes it. Here he comes, Granger down the baseline, pump fake, counted on a foul. Down the other end of the floor, Ed, Mike Rowell did a tremendous job of getting in the way of an easy shot. They come back on the fast break. A great move there by Granger to draw the foul and a chance for a three-point play. And what a time for him to do it with Middle Township starting out with that first, taking a four-point lead. Now he can cut it to one with the free throw, and he does as he knocks it down. Three points for Granger, 33-32, Panthers. Clock has not started, now it goes with 6.05 to go in the third. Middle's been forced to the perimeter for much of this game. McNeil inside of Carano. He, he battles for with Bright tie up, possession now points away the Red Raiders. Classic big man mistake for Corrado. Put the ball down on the ground. That gives the little players a chance to make a play, and they made it there. So Ocean City can get the lead back on this possession. Ranger, and a right. Good bounce pass inside. Ferrari puts it up and in, and the Red Raiders lead by one. Beautiful backdoor pass there, Ed, because the defense went for the double team and nobody picked up the open man underneath. Timeout taken, 5.38 to go in the third quarter. Red Raiders on a 6-0 run, leading 34-33. to Let's go back to the sidelines and hear from Mickey V. Thanks, Ed. I'm here with Dave Sal, who's part of our TSN broadcast crew. And Dave, normally you're not allowed to root for anybody out here, but today it's allowed. This guy's the principal here at Middle Township. But talk about the school, talk about the season, where they had some tough games against Pleasantville. Nobody thought they could beat Willingboro, but yet they're playing for the title here. I'll tell you, uh, Mickey, we've had a great year. You know, obviously you can tell the kids are behind the program. Uh, the kids in the program have really done a nice job. They peaked at the right time, and they got to the point today where they have a shot to win a Group 3 title. Evaluate what you see on the court thus far today. We couldn't ask for a better title game here. Well, I thought the first half we were a little sloppy on the defensive end, and we, uh, we didn't move the ball around offensively as crisp as you usually. Uh, we usually make a second-half run, and I hope we can do that today. Where did you find this young man, John Ashell, of the transfer of Toronto? What a great find for Coach Tom Farraka. Well, John's a, John's a good kid and a really good student and uh, has really done a nice job fitting into the program. All right, appreciate your time. Back to you, Ed. All right, thank you very much, Mickey and Dave. No truth to the rumor that uh, for baseball season, the Ocean City fans have now banned Dave Savo from our broadcasting. <laughs> Lob pass inside, knocked away. Great defense by Ocean City. And the Red Raiders now looking around. Siscano rushes it up. Right, thought about three, steps back out, and now Ocean City will set up. As strange as it seems, you can feel a little momentum swing for Ocean City here. Drive by Toscano, can't get the roll, the rebound goes to Ashley He is hit from behind, and he is fouled. Looks like it'll go against Granger, that'll be his second. 
That was, a, that was a nice drive to the basket there, Ed. That's a shot if Ocean City can make. They're in great shape. Now they trail it. Or actually, they still lead it by one, but middle, I don't know, Ed. There's just something about them offensively. They are very tough to stop. Explosive is a good word to describe them, and we saw that at the start of the half. Neither team with anybody in serious foul trouble. Three Red Raiders with two, but that's it. Everyone else with one or zero. Lee sends one outside now. Or Lee rather has it on the feet for McNeil. Up top it goes to Allen. This is McNeil outside. Jumper around the rim, no good. And Ferrari's got the rebound. Ferrari had to sit out the second quarter with two fouls. He's back in there. And back comes Mike Round. Knifing down the paint. Great feed to Ferrari. Blocked inside by Ashlo. Rebound comes loose. And Middle Township books the run. Allen all the way lays it in. Great anticipation from Allen. As soon as Middle picked up the ball, he sprinted down the floor, picked up the pass, easy bucket. 14 for Allen. Inside, too strong for Rao. Rebound tipped up outside. Dalton goes for it and gets the board. Well, I think Ocean City has to be a little more patient here, Ed. Granger tried to drive, and he is fouled by Corrado, and he'll go to the free throw line. You always like a team that's aggressive and goes to the hoop. That's what Ocean City's trying to do. Right, th right now, though, and I think that's playing in the middle's hands. Sometimes when you have a team as athletic as Ocean City, you get into a running game with this team, you get into their tempo. Sometimes it's hard to break away. Just I like the idea when they were settling it down, taking their time offensively. They seem to have a better shot. I don't, we'll see how the game progresses, how they do. Now they say it's a not shooting foul as we see it inside. Back to live action. Rouse blocked inside, gets the rebound. Pump fake, puts it up, blocked again inside. And the rebound comes to Lee. And here comes middle on the run. Lee feeds to Allen. Allen looking for help. Had it knocked away. Got it back. Triple team inside. Layup is good by Corrado. Well, three players picked up the man with the ball. That's an easy one. Good identification on the pass. 37-34. Panthers up by three. Now, fast-moving game. Ranger for three. That's no good. Ferrari battles the rebound. He's fouled. And it'll be Ocean City possession. Good possession by Ferrari there. Had he not been fouled, he would have came away with that. But again, Ed, if you're noticing now, Ocean City may be one or two passes and then a shot. Corrado picks up his second personal foul. Mike McElarner returns to the game for the Red Raiders. Watch it again. Just enough behind him there to call the foul. That's strong positioning there, as you see by Ferrari. Ocean City's got to get it in around. We'll take the long feed and set up. 3.42 to go in the third. Round, nice pass. Ferrari puts it home. Well, they were in the zone. They went for the double team. Great job to go back door in an easy basket. One point lead for Middle Township. 3.24 to go in the third. Allen now swings it to McNeil. Corrado banged into nothing. Call and Ocean City gets a break there. Allen will fire the jumper. That's short. Rebound battle for and they'll catch Ferrari, I believe, with his third. Well, that's big for Ocean City. He kind of got stuck out of position, had to go over the back and drew the foul because he's been the force underneath in combination with McElarnan. And Coach knows right now he's got to keep an eye on the big man. Here it is again. You're going to see him coming over the back. He's in the red number 30. Tough call. Baseline drive and traveling call against McNeil. So every time... One team seems to seize the momentum. The other kind of hangs in there. And as a result, we have another close game. And now Ferraro will go to the bench. And John Bruno takes time out with 3.05 to go in the third. 37-36 in favor of Middle Township. But Ocean City hanging tough so far. They continue to play a solid basketball game. Well, once again, we've been going courtside all day for Mickey V. Mickey's got another special guest with us, someone who's certainly familiar with local hoops. Go ahead, Mickey. Thanks, Ed. I'm here with director of Cape Atlantic Cats, Rich Marcucci. Rich, I kind of kidded around before. The Cape Atlantic starting to look like an international flavor. You're responsible for bringing a couple of the kids in from London, Andrew Sullivan and Babalu. I'm not sure of his first name, but why do you see that to change in high school and so many kids trying to take advantage of meeting, you know, get some great experience coming out here to the States? Well, you know, a lot of these kids come to our camp in the summer and are looking for opportunities to play in the States, and they meet up with these other kids that are from these schools at camp, and the kids kind of work things out amongst each other and talk to their coaches that things happen. But the opportunities in America and in New Jersey are fantastic for players. 
yourself showing your acumen for basketball all the way is yourself. You come out to a game here. St. Augustine, their championship's coming up. They'll be in Lakewood. What brings you out to this game, and what do you think of the game thus far? Well, we're always at games looking to talk to kids and coaches about our camps in the summertime and what we have to offer. Uh, but it's, it's nice to come out and watch great teams like Middle and Ocean City, and Middle having such a great relationship with us in the summertime. We're just always looking forward to seeing them play. Right. Appreciate you stopping by, Mitch. Thanks a lot. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, Mickey, and back we go. As Mike Brown has the ball knocked away out of bounds. Red Raiders take over. 2.54 to go in this third quarter. 37-36 Panthers. And right down this time at 2.54, that's when Ferrari comes in the game. Di Donato comes in and replaces him. Let's see if Ocean City can hang. Well, one thing we know about Di Donato, he's not afraid to hang around in there. We saw it during football season. It's part of the state championship from Ocean City. Dalton for three. That's good. He's been incredible from outside. Mentally, they really needed that one. Ocean City back up by two. 39-37. 2.38 to go in the third. McNeil thought about three and Steph will take the two and leave it too strong. Nice rebound by Corrado and he'll pull it out. Needs help as he gives up the dribble. Finds Allen. Who finds Lee. Corrado fires for three. That's good. That's a big man. That's his second three-pointer of the game. He has 12 points on the day. 40 to 39, middle back up top. Now they work it back to Dalton. This time he doesn't get an open look. Drive inside by Rob Block, inside by middle, and Allen looks to run. Two on one. Allen bounce pass inside, layup. Good by Lee, who now has nine. It's almost like money in the bank. Anytime they get the fast break, they can always find the open man very creative with the ball. 42-39. And you're back up by three. For Ocean City, that needs to be very patient. Dalton again. This time he misses no good. DiDonato banging for the rebound. And a foul called inside. This will probably go against either Dalton or DiDonato. I think it was Dalton there, Ed, that came in. And again, if I'm Ocean City at that point, I want to... To run a little bit of offense there. Let's like the middle play some defense. They went with the shot, missed, and you see that young man there is the one who we thought would pick up the foul, but he did not. Well, Ryan Reich's going to come back into the game, and McElwain will get a breather. So minute 27 to go in the third. Here comes middle leading by three. Toronto wanted to shoot the three again and said feeds inside. Now pulling it back out his lead. But what that's doing, Ed, it's bringing a big man out. It's opening up the floor because he's hit two three-pointers. Justin Maker now in the game. Corrado for three again. That's good. That could be the difference in the game right there because that changes things defensively for Ocean City. 15 for Corrado. 45-39 on the steal. Quickly they get it up ahead to Allen. Going down the baseline. No good, but a foul call. They'll catch it all around. O City needs a timeout here, Ed. They need to settle this game to slow things down. You can really sense Middles on a run. So free throws are coming now for Middle Township as Allen will do the honors. Watch it again. Defensively, they reach up just before him. Wow. Boy, great second look, and I think he got all ball there. Well, got to keep an eye on the body. That's the one thing you can't see, though. Makes the first free throw. That was as good a second look as you'll get. And I'd have to think that if Ocean City doesn't score here, they really need a timeout to slow things down. Well, there's only 52.3 in the third, so we'll see as the second shot is good if they either hold for the last shot or John Bruno will touch a little time left in the quarter and just let him go. Your biggest bucket of the game here, Ed. Dalton around. He's double teamed again. Fights through and he's fouled. Not a shooting foul as they'll catch Allen with the second. From a mental standpoint, with 36 seconds to go, if you're going to hold for the last shot, this is one basket you want to make. You trail it by eight at the moment. As coming out of the game is Corrado. Ed, they really need to make this shot be a good one. Smart move here by Middle Township. Corrado's got two fouls. They take him out for the last defensive possession. They'll probably have him right back in there in the court. Ocean 
Jefferson City, the number five seed at the start of this tournament. Not too many people expect them to be there outside of the Ocean City players, coaching staff, and fans. Brown down the baseline, Canada foul! You need a big shot? Why not your senior, who's the all-time leading scorer now at Ocean City? Big shot, chance for a three-point play, gets him right back in the game. Had a tough drive along the baseline, and he'll go to the line. Watch it again. This is just late identification by the defense coming in there. Great move by Rao. The defense that has to get in there a step or two earlier. Rao knocks down the free throw. He has 11 points on the day. 47-42. Ocean City down by five. 28.4 on the clock here in the third. And right now, the difference has been, since Ferrari came out of the game, that's when Middle went on their run. And he will probably be back for the start of the fourth quarter. Looks like the Panthers will hold out for the final shot. 12 seconds. Lee looks things over. Looks like he wants to go one-on-one -on -one with McElroy. Beats him, goes to the basket, blocked inside by Di Donato. Fade away, jumper, traveling ball. Well, you're Ocean City. Maybe you can get a little lucky if you can get the ball down the court. Two point nine, and there it goes. Going down for Granger. Able to step. Oh, just got his foot out of bounds. Good call. Good try by Ocean City. 1.6 on the clock. A little too much mustard on that home run pass. Now middle has a chance. Just one second on the clock, and that'll do it. The third quarter is over, so Middle Township makes their run. But Ocean City hanging tough. 47 42. And if you're middle, Ed, you have to identify that and maybe go after Ferrari. So middle will inbound again, going from left to right in the white jerseys. Ocean City in the red as we start the fourth. McNeil trying to drive inside. Good defense will feed Allen. Tough man to man now by Ocean City. Ashlow having trouble to beat it back out to McNeil. Great move by McNeil, but leaves it too strong. Bat up the rebound. Ashlow's got a strong move, puts it home. The battle of the board's been won by middle for the most part tonight, but you could already see having Ferrari in there forced a tough shot. 49-42. Rowell spinning along the baseline off the window. No good. Leaves it short. Ferrari can't get the rebound. Has to be careful with his three fouls. He's just got to get out of the way once the ball comes down. Critical stretch here. McNeil's jumper is good. Largest lead of the game for the Panthers at nine. And John Bruno takes time out. 51-42. Middle Township stretches their lead. Well, uh, who's who of basketball here in the high school and college level? Let's get out of the McNeil with another special guest. Thanks, Ed. As you said earlier, just the coming of people you see that come out here and with head coach of Rowan University, Joe Cassie. Well, first off, Coach, I know it was a disappointing loss the other day against William Patterson, showing why the New Jersey Athletic Conference is such a tough conference. If you can't talk about what happened in that ballgame. Oh, it was a very bitter, dis disappointing loss. Very, very disappointing. Uh, they just played a little better than we did down the stretch. We missed some shots down the stretch. We missed some foul shots. But I thought the key was the fact that they out-rebounded us uh, severely in the second half. And, and they got a lot of second shots, and that's what cost us the game. That and a few costly turnovers at the wrong time. You so don't officially while well, your season's over, but the coach's job is never done. What brings you out to this ball game? I mean, what a game we've seen this far. Well, we're always in need of good players, and there are quite a few good basketball players on this floor today, and that's what brings us out here to, to try and see if we can recruit some talent for next year. And you may be a little pointer. Anybody out there, maybe you're looking at, you want to let, not let us know or tell us? Or... Uh, it's against NSA rules to comment specifically on recruits. So there's no, I can't mention any names. That's NSA regulations. Well, what do you think of this game this far? So far, it's a heck of a game. I think that, that Middle is, is doing a real good job. Middle seems to be a little more talented. First I've seen either team. But Ocean City really worked the ball around well in the first half and got some great open looks and did a great job. Now Middle's really tightened up their defense in this half and starting to pull away a little bit now. I right, appreciate your time, Coach. Head back to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ricky V, with Joe Cassidy, uh, head coach of Rowan University. And with 6.50 to go in the fourth quarter, Mike Rao will get some free throws as Corrado picks up his third. And talking to coach there, Ed, that just gives the show you never know what's going to happen once you hit the playoffs. 
First free throw is no good. While uh, Ocean City uh, may want to see Rowan and Stockton do well, they can almost use that a little motivating force to see a, a lower-seeded, fifth seed William Patterson beats number one Rowan. Even in high school ball this year, none of the number one seeds made it to the final round. I think that's the stat of the night right there. Keep that in mind if you're filling out your NCAA brackets for amusement only, of course. <laughs> Although I'm putting Duke in the finals. Yeah, number one. McNeil lobs inside. Ashlow had it taken away by Rowell. Here come the Red Raiders on the run. Rowell in the paint knife through. Puts it home. Great anticipation by Rowell. He saw the block was coming up. Moved his body. Easy two. 14 points for Rowell. 51-45. Ocean City not going away. Allen fires for three. That's way short of the rebound comes to Wright. I'm really surprised Allen took that one in. He wasn't in good position. Here comes the money man, Rao, down the baseline. He's pushed. And that will be the 17th foul, so Rao will get free throws. It looks like Rao's decided he's going to take it upon himself here, Ed. He's going very aggressive to the basket. He drew the foul there. He's causing, he's making some nice opportunities for his team. Let's take a look at that again. But again, defensively, you see the right side of your screen, middle very late identifying with the help. Ashton has to get over there a lot quicker, Ed. And a timeout taken, 6.04 to go in this third quarter. Ocean City trailing by six, but a one-on-one -on -one opportunity now for Mike Rowell. While the players huddle in the huddle, Mickey V's huddling in the stands. Go ahead, Mickey. Thanks, as Again, we talk about some of the people coming out the game, making the trip all the way from Ocean City. Stacy McRae, one of the offensive, defensive linemen for them, South Georgia Group 3 team. Well, Stacy, you know, Tom's River South, they said you couldn't beat him. Everybody said... Ocean City here couldn't beat Middle. Did you talk to the guys during the week, maybe get them pumped up? Or? Man, I know them all. We all talked, and they felt they could beat them. We thought they had a chance, so they're going to come out and give it they all like anybody from Ocean City would do. You know, we're all close-knit, so I know everybody, and they're here to play. They're going to give it the best they can, and we'll see who comes out on top. It's been a great year for Ocean City Sports, field hockey championship, soccer. They didn't win, but they went to the championship. Another championship year. What's so great about Ocean City? I don't know what it is. It might be the water or something. It's just <laughs> these guys, they work hard. They want to win. They just want to win. Everybody's competitive. They all want to do it. So they came out to get a victory, and they're not going to be happy leaving without one. So well, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, Mickey, maybe it is something in the water as Round knocks both down. Basketball team playing the championship. Football team wins group three. Field hockey team wins another state championship. And the list goes on in Ocean City. I had to go get me some water down there, Ed. <laughs> Wouldn't help me, that's for sure. Nothing could. Better off on the sidelines. <laughs> Four-point game. As Rowell has responded, 5.44 to go. There's the oh. drive, and a foul called inside against Ocean City, and that'll be Ferrari Sport. The first step got by him. He tried to reach in and drew the foul at the last second. With 5.40 to go here, Coach Bruno has turned his back. He's staring at the scoreboard. He's got a difficult decision to make here. He really, at this point, can't afford to pull him out. You're going to see his right hand reach in here at the last second. Just get a little bit of the arm right there. The first free throw is no good by Ashlow. He has struggled at the line today. He is just one for five as a team. Middle Township is four for nine. You saw Coach Bruner there second at. He's going to let him stay in with four fouls. Second free throw is good. Well... Either way, it's not a bad decision, whatever you decide to do. I like it. Being the underdog edge, you're down now. You have to make something happen. He's got to stay in. Brown now going one-on-one, -on -one, looking for help. Finds Ferrari, tries to get the quick shot up, partially blocked. Crashes for the rebound, puts it up and in. Sometimes it's good to have a feeling, and it paid off there with two. Three-point lead for Middle Township. Knifing is Allen. What a sweet shot. He puts that home. And I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of that for middle, knowing that Ferrari has four and is going to have to back off. 18 for Allen. 54-49. Middle Township up by five. Reich takes it with five minutes to go on the fourth. It's been Rouse's fourth quarter offensively so far for Ocean City. Senior has it knocked away as he is hounded by Lee. Reich. Nowhere to go. Good defense by Middle Township. Reich 
fires for three. That's short. Good box out by Corrado as he gets the rebound. Outstanding play by Corrado. And Wright got the shot he wanted. I thought that was actually good shot selection. It's just a little shy of the rim. They were patient moving the ball around. Middle doing a nice job keeping Rao from penetrating. 4.15 to go in the fourth. It's Eric Dalton, the three-point specialist, prepares to check in. Corrado on the feet inside. Scramble. What do we have? Tie up, possession now points the way to Ocean City. Well, it'll be interesting to see now as Dalton comes into the game. I believe he has at least one three, has two three-pointers under his belt. And they bring him in, hopefully, to open things up in the low post. If he's open, he'll take the shot. If not, it should open up Ferrari underneath. 4.05 to go in the fourth. Rao wants to penetrate. Nice down the paint, but has it blocked inside by Ashelou. Battle for the rebound. He's got it. Great defense by John Ashelou. Back they come the other way. Lee drives. No basket. Traveling call. Big call right there. That gives Ocean City some breathing room. Again, they're down five. They need a good set offensive play here. Under four minutes to go as Granger brings it up. Rao trying to feed Dalton, knocked away. Middle Township clamping down on the defensive end. Well, that was the case there. I think Dalton thought he was going to go all the way and all of a sudden passed it back and Dalton wasn't ready for it. Middle Township in their 10th straight championship. They've, fought, they've gone five and four in that stretch. McNeil guns one across to Ashalou. Three and a half to go on the fourth. Ashley will try and drive on Ferrari with the four fouls. He gets help. And a blocking foul called, I believe, against Rao coming over for the help. It's a good effort by Rao, though, to attempt to draw the charge. Are they going to call this against Ferrari, Ed? Yeah, this is against Ferrari. Well, if it had been against Rao, it would have been his fourth, but Ferrari fouls out. So Brian DiDonato is going to step in. Here it is again. Ferrari's number 30. He's the one who gets the foul here. Let's take a look at this. A little reach in before it. I think wow. that's what they call, but if they call that... That's a tough call. Eh? That's a very tough call. So big free throws come here. Well, if they have to foul somebody from the Ocean City perspective, Ashalu is just two for six on the line. And he misses the first. Well, mark that number down if you're an Ocean City player. If you have to foul, here's your guys. Ed just pointed out. Second free throw is good. Six-point lead for Middle Township, 55-49. 3.20 to go on the fourth. If you're Ocean City, Ed, you can't panic. A lot of time left. DiDonato inside, and he's fouled from behind by Ashley. That's only his first, so he's got plenty to give. A lot of teams, especially underdogs, tend to panic in this situation, start pumping up threes. And a good last offensive set there to go to the blocks. Both teams in the penalty now. So DiDonato, as we said, is headed to Cornell after the season's at the free throw line. DiDonato on the season. Just five for 17 from the line, and he misses the free throw. Well, Corrado having trouble, almost had it taken away, but Ashley gathers it. Up ahead it goes to Lee as Ocean City tries to pressure defensively. Allen, Corrado, oh, he had the three but didn't take it with three minutes left in the fourth. And a foul call against McElarnon from behind. Well, this is the guy, if you're Middle Township, you want to see at the free throw line. And Middle Township's doing a good job at of spreading the floor offensively. And what that's doing is really putting pressure on Ocean City defensively because it's opening up the middle of the floor. So free throws are coming for Corrado. He's had 15 points tonight. And he can't get the roll. The rebound comes to Ocean City as Granger's got it. Ocean City has to score here, Ed. Granger hits the jumper to knock it down to a four-point lead. 55-51, Ocean City not going away. Allen, she will spread the floor now. Lee fires for three, that's good! Nothing but net for Lee, and that was a tough shot. 12 points for Lee, and those three are as big as so far. 
Dalton wanted to answer, but he couldn't get the shot off. 2.20 to go in the fourth. Rowell underneath, pump fake, tried to pass it to DiDonato. Ball comes away to Allen. Allen up to Lee. Lee, oh. down the paint, he's tripped up and he's bad. No, they call a carry beforehand. Ouch. Maybe a bit of a break for Ocean City there. Well, if they ever needed a break, they need it right there, and they got it. There you see DiDonato. Here we come back down the floor looking for that double dribble. Boy, I, I don't know. We get to see it in slow motion. That's all I'll say. Uh, Ocean City got a break, and Dalton going for the ball got his legs. Dalton's got the open look for the three and knocks it down. Great set play. Got a nice pick by Vidanato. Put a little extra into that pick. Under two minutes to go. Four-point lead for Middle Township. Ocean City hanging tough. Brian Allen trying to drive again. Feeds it outside. Here's Oslo, Middle Ocean City might want to think about fouling him, and they do right there, he'll drive in, but a foul is called. This is actually a good foul here for Ocean City. And I think that's good strategy, because Di Donato isn't the quickest player in the Ocean City team, and Ashton really has a quick first step, so you just tell Di Donato, if he gets by you, foul him. So it looks like the foul will go against Di Donato. That would be his second. And as we said, he's the guy you want to foul if you're Ocean City. At the same time, DiDonato's got some fouls to give. So a one and one so both teams with nine team fouls. So after this free throw, everyone's in the bonus the rest of the way. And a timeout taken with 1.41 to go. Well, uh, Ocean City, Tad, they were the underdogs coming in. They played a strong first half. It looked like they were on the ropes here a little bit. If they do go on to lose this game, I think while they may be upset at the defeat, they have left nothing in the locker room. I have been really impressed with their game plan today, Ed. They came right at middle. A lot of teams might be intimidated as you look at this replay again. They came right at middle today and did a tremendous job. Foul was just before that there. But again, they're still in the game. They trail it by four, 141 to play in the game. I like that last offensive set they had for Ocean City. You got the pick for Di Donato. Dalton was wide open, and it looks like if he's unchallenged, he can hit the three. All right, this has been uh, a great championship game. Everything it should be. And Ocean City, at the beginning of the year, a lot of people thought this could be their year. They weren't the favorites, especially with the likes of Atlantic City in their division. And they were beaten by the Vikings twice. They were beaten by Holy Spirit twice and from the other division in the crossover. But a talented team, they picked the right time to get on the run. And, and Ocean City was capable of that. They have done that. And now they find themselves four points away. Interesting, too, after the timeout, Ashton had a long time to think about his free throws. Three for eight so far tonight. Maybe he won't get free throws, Ed. My mistake. Well, it looked like well, he should have been because he was fouled, but they don't call it. So the Red Raiders get a break. Brown tips it away, but Lee gets it back. And he's fouled by Dalton. If there was a foul on the play before, then it should be a one and one That was my impression of it, Ed. But nonetheless, we'll go to the free throw line right now with Lee, leading scorer on the team average-wise. Two huge free throws. Every free throw the rest of the way at his big for either team. So now the pressure on Lawrence Lee. He is one for two for the line tonight. Tenth team foul, so this is a two-shot foul. And he misses. The door stays open for the Red Raiders. free throw is way short. Dalton's got the rebound. Ocean City with a minute and a half to go, trailing by four. Here goes Rao. Down the paint, puts it up way too strong. Battle for the rebound. McElarn has got it. Dalton thought about three, and now they'll swing it. Has it taken away. Good defense by middle, but it goes back to right. Open is Rao. He puts it in. Two-point game. Great job of reacting in an open floor situation there. 108 to go. Two-point game for the Group 3 championship. And as soon as Oshelo gets it, they may foul him right away. There it is. He's going to drive on McElhorn. A double team. Puts it up. Balls loose. Who wants it? McNeil. Along the baseline. Out of bounds. Good play by McNeil. Still middle township ball. 
Ocean City, if they can somehow come up with a big defensive play, can shock the South Jersey world right here. What a ball game. Allen's turn on the inbound. Everybody tense. And we go back outside now as Lee takes it. McNeil taken away by Dalton. And Dalton's foul. He'll go to the free throw line and try and tie the game. That's a huge play from Dalton coming off the bench. Two can tie it in. I think the Ocean City fans can feel it, and that shot says it all. Well, he was 7 for 10 coming in, and he just did his first clutch free throw. Second one can tie it with 46-7 left. Makes it. No problem getting him the ball in the low post. So let's see if Middle Township holds for the final shot. Boy, high drama. This is what it's all about in South Jersey basketball. Morano's got to get it in first, and he has trouble. He takes time out. Good decision. So they'll talk it over again. Good defense by Ocean City. A lot of this is just adrenaline for Ocean City. Yet. Defensively, they are sky high and did a great job there. Well, a lot of drama here, a lot of happiness on the Ocean City side. But the first time these two teams met, it was a 21-point win for Middle Township. This Ocean City team and head coach John Bruno, we mentioned a very difficult summer. It looked like he would not be back as the boys basketball and softball coach. And after deciding for an entire summer, they finally decided to bring John Bruno back. I think they're happy with their decision. So here we go again. 46.7 on the clock. Middle Township trying to win it. We're tied at 58. Toronto still can't get in, but a foul call against Dalton. And that will send McNeil to the free throw line. Doesn't necessarily hurt you here, Ed. You make him earn from the free throw line, 46 seconds to play. You're still going to get the ball back with a chance to either tie it or win it. So I don't think that's that bad of a play for Ocean City. Well, you see Dalton pleading his case. The one downside is uh, Ocean City wanted to play him straight up defensively. So Dalton commits the foul. And it'll be interesting to see if Ocean City called a play in the huddle instead of setting things up after a make or a miss. Watch free throw by McNeil will have another. There's that call underneath. Very close call. try again. Forces it up, but it goes off the hands of Ashelo. 32.1 seconds left. Again, and it was interesting. Ocean City did not call timeout, and I don't think they're going to call timeout here to give Middle a chance to set things up. A couple of rush shots by Ocean City. And Rowell's got it on the inbound. 30 seconds left. Rowell knifing down the paint. Outside, right for three. Off the window, no good. Granger battles for it. It comes away to Middle Township as Lee's got it. 20 seconds left. Up ahead to McNeil. Puts it up and in. 17 seconds left. Ocean City has to hurry. Round. Coming down. Fires a long three. That's no good. Rebound comes to McElarnon. Dalton tries to get it up. He's fouled. He'll get three shots as he goes to the free throw line, but 6.9 seconds left. Wow. I think he 
just summarize it, Ed, with one word. Wow. What a job by Middle to get a huge defensive rebound to come down the floor and make a bucket. So even if Dalton makes these three, it's still a two-possession game. Well, you hope he makes three, and then you better foul immediately. If he makes two, could he miss the third intentionally? If I'm the coach, maybe that's the best strategy. Hope you make the first two. The problem being middle with Oshlu in there, as you saw that again, Oshlu is very athletic and get very high. He's the low man on the block. Don't forget, we'll have post-game coverage coming up if everyone can catch their breath. That is the fifth foul against McNeil, so he's out of the game. Still two, or even one, to make it a one possession game. We're back here at Eastern High School, 6.9 seconds left, 62-60, Middle Township. The Panthers have possession, they will inbound, and Ocean City will go for the steal or the quick foul. A lot of times I've seen a defensive team try to take an offensive foul during a pick here. Corrado with the bounce to Allen, he's fouled immediately by Granger. So now with six seconds left, two free throws will pretty much wrap this up for Middle Township. Well, the first one's the key here, Ed, because we know he's going to shoot two. If he can make the first one, at worst, with a miracle three, we're going to overtime. If he makes them both, Middle's going to move on. It's a two-shot foul, both teams in the bonus. Allen tonight, two for two for the line. door is open for Ocean City. Makes the second. Ocean City can tie it with a three. Six seconds left. Quickly, it's rushed up by Wright. Takes a desperation. Three and hits it. Two seconds left. I don't believe it. We've got overtime. Shoot two. 
And now they are going to say a foul. We saw what looked like the tie-up sign with the two thumbs up. But now they're going to give free throws to Wright. The foul goes against Allen. That's his second. Wright is a 72% free throw shooter. And the man of the hour rolls the first one in. This is just unbelievable, Ed. <laughs> this is, without a doubt, as good as it gets. Second free throw is good, boy. Reich's the man right now. 65-63, Ocean City leads. Allen knifing down the paint, scoops it home. And I have no idea how he got that in the basket. Great athletic effort there. He's got 21 points. Three and a half to go. Brown spinning and traveling call. Everybody on their feet now. Including the announcers. <laughs> the only way we can see. This is intense in here. One play right now could make or break a title for either team. free throw line. Good penetration by Lawrence Lee. And Tad, you said it. With Ferrari out of the game, Middle Township's attacking the basket. It opens the hole underneath of the basket and the low post is wide open. And Ocean City in that situation has to do a better job of helping. Defensively, one-on-one, -on -one, they got beaten. Nobody really stepped in to help. You see here, real late to identify is Reich. Reich's got to get in there a lot earlier. It's Reich's first personal foul. Misses the free throw. He has struggled badly from the line tonight. Leo on the night is two out of six. <laughs> to give Middle the lead with this free throw. And he does. 66-65 Panthers. I just have a feeling about Dalton here, Ed. Got three threes already. Right to round. Here goes the senior. Fires and leaves it short. Ball tipped out, tipped up in the air. Nice grab by Allen. Allen, up ahead it goes to Lee. Layup is good. They're as good as anybody in South Jersey when it comes to the full court and the break there. Great job. They've been unstoppable on the run. 68-65. Dalton, one to three, outside. Reich, Ranger. Good pass off the hands of McElon, and good thought, but too strong a pass. Tough break for Ocean City there. It's a real good look at the pass. So now, Middle Township can stretch their lead to five. You see the entire Panther bench on their feet. And Allen's going to take his time. Goes strong, blocked away, and if that's against Rao, that's his fifth. We'll make that his fourth. Check that. Well, middle there, spread the floor, took their time. They lined all four players up in the block. Good aggressive move to go to the hoop by Allen. And now that's going to put some pressure right on Rao. So now it's Allen's turn at the free throw line. He's three out of four. And he gets the first one to roll in front of a throng of Panther supporters. Second free throw is good. 70 to 65, Middle Township. Two minutes to go in the overtime. Dalton for three, that's good. I got a feeling, Ed, he's your man. He's got four three-pointers. He's got 16 points. Two-point game, 70 to 68. You got to come up with a big defensive play here. Allen trying to break down Rao 101 and said feeds Lee. He might try and draw Rao into his fit. It said Lee will go against Granger. Spinning, tried to tip it inside, knocked away. Who's got it? Scramble on the floor. Ocean City takes it. They can tie it. Well, they've got 123 on the clock here. Let's see how they want to attack it. Rao attacks, fires, and scores. No basket. Now what are they going to do? They're going to count it? Let's see. No basket. 
basket. Ryle will get two free throws. You could really see working hard to get open was Dalton. Dalton wanted to take a three there, but a great job by Rowell. And again, if you're Ocean City, Ed, this is the guy I want at the free throw line here. I don't care what his percentage is. I want him here right now. Four for five from the line. He's got 18 points today, making 19. Comley knocks it down. Next one can tie it. One fifteen to go in the first overtime. Allen rushing down the paint, trying to feed it outside, knocked away. It's Ocean City ball with 1.07 to go. Well, let's see what Coach is going to do. You're going to take the air out of the ball here. You're going to work a set. The Ocean City crowd goes bonkers again. Now the Red Raiders could try and hold here, run the clock, and maybe get a final shot. There's just 105 on the clock, and here we go. A lot of times they had to run clock to about 20 seconds to take a timeout. Rouse going to fire the jumper. That's good. The senior hits. Ocean City leads by two. 48 seconds left. Allen. Oslo inside against McElhart. To Dalton, they get it across the line. Reich, 26 seconds away. And a foul call, Reich passes it out. The free throw's coming for Rao. With 24.9 left, can Cinderella finish the night? Sometimes at the intangibles are what wins it for you. An outstanding job of defensive rebounding by Ocean City. If they can make two free throws here, this roof might cave in. Another championship in a school year filled with a lot of them. If he makes this, and if you're Ocean City, you don't want to foul. Four point lead, 74-70, 24 seconds left. Middle has to hurry. Here comes Allen. Fires a desperation three, no good. And Rao runs it down for Ocean City. 15 seconds left, he's fouled, 13.8 on the clock. Somebody and whoever gets it, hold on to it. 
make them foul you. Coming up, we'll have post-game coverage. If either team can come back from cloud nine, whoever wins this one. But how about Middle Township? They rush it up, and the center, not noted for his outside shooting, hits a big shot. And who really is going to have the pressure here, Ed, is the young man who inbounds the ball. The entire pressure of the building will be on his shoulders to get it in successfully. I think there's some Panthers in shock that the game is in this situation. They might have come in a little overconfident, and you almost couldn't blame them. They dominated Ocean City earlier in the year. They had to beat a tough Willingboro squad to get here. They won by 21 the first time these two teams met. And that really surprised me because Dalton's one of the best free throw shooters on the team. Granger's about 80%, but over 70% is Dalton. And two here would win it. Dalton is four for five tonight. 18 points. What a performance by Eric Dalton. And a timeout taken as Middle tries to ice him. We will take a quick break. We'll be back. Well, that look says it all as we return to Eastern High School. The heavily favored Middle Township Panthers in disbelief right now as Ocean City, with three seconds left, leads by two, trying to seal it with two free throws from Dalton. Everybody delivered. You couldn't really even pick one man as our star of the game. Everybody had a part in this South Jersey championship. Well, they're still pretty happy, and rightly so. Some tears of joy. Some tears of happiness. There he is, the puck. You name it. I guess you could call the shot heard around the world, Ed, was the three-pointer by Wright, because without that, we wouldn't be here celebrating with Ocean City. Everybody did it. 23-04. Ralph 
played hard. Brown got the points when they needed. Ferrari, even in foul trouble, battled through. That's another point. They did all this without Ferrari on the floor. Well, they're still happy on the floor. And while they calm things down, we will take a quick break. When we come back, our stars of the game, everybody on Ocean City <laughs> and head coach John Bruno. <laughs> There is pandemonium on the court. The Ocean City Red Raiders still, rightfully so, celebrating one of the greatest championship wins in South Jersey Group 3 history. Nobody gave them much of a chance, but they are down celebrating. And Mickey V is going to talk to some of the South Jersey champs. Mickey, good luck and take it away. Thanks, Ed. You can see him right here. I'm with the winners, the South Jersey Group 3 champs. Looking for Ryan Reich right now. Ryan, we'll talk about it. a lot of the fans, ourselves on the sideline. Nobody expected you to get this far, but really things look bad. It looked like the game was over. You came down to court. We all like gas. One of those shots went, no! But yes, you put it in. What was going through your mind out there? Uh, I mean, I was, I was really shocked that I was even getting the ball because the play was to get it to Mike and let Mike go down the court. And when they gave it to me, I mean, I wrote even how much time was on the clock. I just know how to get a shot quick. And they're telling me now that there were six seconds that I probably should have got closer, but I didn't know that. And I just, I mean, I just turned and threw it up. I thought I was throwing it at the buzzer, and I just, I prayed. Throughout the game, talk about what Coach was talking about. We did St. James, St. Joe's the other day, quarterfinal matchups. It's an incredible game for the Lady Wildcats. Come back yourselves, your tenacity, your determination, your character really show from the football field yourself. You got a group championship now on basketball court. How, what does this mean to you? Uh, it, mean, it means so much because I haven't been, I've never been a part of something like this before. Um, yeah, this is, I'm only a junior and this is the first time that I've been a part of the championship team in, in anything. So it means as much to me as anybody. All right, we appreciate your time. Going to get Gil Ferrari. Gil! Gil! Gil. Gil Ferrari going to bring in now the transfer, really the exchange student from Brazil. I know, what, well, first off, what brought you to Ocean City? I mean, it's a beautiful area to just hang around on the beach, check out the bikinis, etc. But you played some great basketball, and they love to have you back. I know you're a senior. Yeah, um, I'm, I think like I'm like a lucky guy because I could go like anywhere in the United States, and I came to the city of Ocean City, and it's like unbelievable. Like the people here, like uh, the school, everything is like awesome, and this basketball team we're like all together, we're like a family and we, we, we started like playing like real good game like seven games before and we started like playing together and, and, and oh my gosh, I, I'm feeling like great, I never felt like that, like that before. I mean, can it get any better Lakewood game? No, but you couldn't beat Lakewood, then you have that great fourth quarter, big four offensive rebounds in, 23 rebounds, 24 points, and then you come out here, a team that beat you by, I was 21 I believe in the first encounter, what was the difference you think in today's ball game? Um, yeah, uh, the problem is they play like more, they, put, they have like two big guys, they play like, uh, they're big and they play like hard inside, and that was like tough for us, like in the penetration. And uh, to get like the ball in the post and to try to go inside, that game was was like more, like harder than than the game against Lakewood. That we had like to take care about the shooters because Lakewood they had like good, like two point shooters, but uh, middle they have like both a great team, Mid and Lakewood, and we could like beat them and. Yeah, that's great. It's state champs. I mean, I don't know when you head back to Brazil, but you got some great stories, some tales to tell when you get back there. What are you going to tell your friends and family back there? Yeah, oh my God. I can tell that I felt something that I can never felt before. Like, uh, every, everything that happened to me here, it's like just unbelievable. And, and oh my gosh, I, I don't know. I'm going I'm to have to write like a book to tell everything that happened to me. That's just unbelievable. Like, it's right. awesome. We appreciate yeah. it. Congratulations. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to bring in now Mike Raul, the senior, set the all-time record here now at Ocean City. Mike, you've had some successes on the court, some failures. You lost to Middletown the first time. Yes. Coming in, what did Coach tell you in order to get... I mean, Lakewood obviously gave you a lot of confidence. You could beat some top caliber team, but also in the back of the mind, you knew they kind of handled it in that third quarter last time. Yes. We, um, we knew we had in the first game, we played them tight, and we just had a little fall in the third quarter. Which, and we, we got back, we got behind by a decent amount of points and it was hard for us to get it back all in one quarter. We just knew if we came out, played all four quarters hard and played together, and we knew a lot middle had, we thought we were prepared enough to play for it, to play with them. And we just, we just knew if we played together and played hard, we could make it a game. It's almost like your, your football team couldn't beat Tom's River. You guys couldn't beat Lakewood. Now you couldn't beat Middle. You come out and win. You're down three. Ryan Reich's dribbling the ball down the court. 
It was one of those shots where he's like, no, no, but when it goes in, you're yes, yes, six seconds on the clock. What was going through your mind then? And then also in overtime, you guys were down five, where it was a great year just to reach here. You could have hung your heads and patted yourselves on the back, but instead, you guys dunked deep and came away with the win. Yeah, that, that last play, um, after the foul shot, I was supposed to uh, run to the bar and get it, and the man was sticking me tight, and we threw it in the Ryan, and Ryan was dropping up court, and I guess, I guess he, felt, he felt the shot, and he just let it loose. And the only thing I, that was going through my mind was inside it was get to the basket, get to the rim. So if he if he misses, you have an opportunity to get the rebound and put it back in. And he made it. Now talk about your career a little bit. I know you got the tournament of champions come up, so you want to look too far ahead. But all-time leading scorer here now. Now you go away with the South Jersey Group Three Championship, the first one in the school's history really since 1972. What does that mean for you? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, it feels good to break the school record, but it feels even better to win the South Jersey Championship in the same day. I always, always wanted, uh, that was something I wanted to achieve in the back of my mind, but I always wanted to make it to the playoffs and win the South Jersey, maybe go on further and win more. But we're here and now we have nothing to lose. I just, I just want to go on and keep going. And yeah, we're going to bring him in in one second. We can find him in all this uh, craziness here. Coach John Bruno, in the beginning of the season, it looked like your coach wasn't going to be back. He was back. But talk about what he meant to you, not just as a player, but as a person, how he's helped you grow. Yeah, he's, he's, been, he's a great coach. He's been there for me all four years. When I, when there was, when I was down, people were up against me. He was there. He, was always, he always had my back. And I just, I'm just happy. We brought him. He not, this is the first time he ever been to the finals. And when he came here, we got, we got the championship for him. I just wanted to come out. Just, I, don't, I just wanted to come out and win the championship for him. And our seniors, we played tonight like we don't want to go home. No, I don't think any of our seniors won in our season. And we, I think we're showing it the way we're playing on the court. All right, congratulations. And Ed, their season doesn't end. I'm looking for Coach Jumper. Okay, now, we'll talk about the game itself. Hit some big three-pointers in there. It looked like at times, really, their big guys were really going to take over on you. But your determination, really, your guts, your intestinal fortitude brought you guys through. <coughs> um, I don't know, it's a, it's a game of fractions. And uh, it, it's a shame there has to be a clear-cut winner. Both, I think both teams are, are, are winners because uh, that would have gone five minutes longer might have had a different outcome. That game could have gone on forever, but it just seems at the end of overtime we were a couple points ahead. It was amazing. And talk about that. You were down five, in fact, in that overtime. Mm -hmm. Things maybe look bad for Ocean City, the fans, and yourself. Again, showing your determination, your character. You guys really dunk, dug deep. Talk about you're on the free throw line now, though. Some key free throws. What was going through your mind there? Especially after you missed that first one. Um, after I missed the first one, I know the I knew the next two were going in because you know I had the feel. First one, I mean, it, it wasn't a bad miss. I mean, I wouldn't have, I would have been too upset about it if, if we lost because of that because it just rimmed in and out. But uh, their free throws are definitely important. And in the Lakewood game, that's what decided the game. And today, that's what decided the game basically. And football season, they, Ocean City couldn't win the title. You guys couldn't win the title this week. What's so special about Ocean City that, I mean, again, your character is just amazing down there at the island. You know what? Um, I, play on the, I played on the soccer team, and we made it to the South Jersey Group 3 Finals. And, uh, you know, we lost 3-2. We, we, were, we were middle. That's who we were. And uh, today, today we happen to be, we happen to come out on top, and it's just sweeter that we won. And uh, I don't know, I hope... I hope all my, uh, my, my soccer, my soccer play teammates are watching just to, just maybe they can share a little bit because I'm sorry we didn't win that and it, it feels so great. It's amazing. I was going to say that for your soccer fans but some of the other kids out there, again, you're not supposed to win this game. What can you tell to some of those kids out there to say, hey, you can win as long as you give that 100 We're not even I'm supposed to be anywhere near this high school right now. I mean, uh, we play with so much heart against Lakewood. Um, that was just a total team effort. And uh, we, we just didn't want to stop playing. We want to play another game. I mean, we, we didn't really think of this as some big championship. We just want to play another game. We want to keep the season going. We're having so much fun. And it's even sweeter for Mr. Bruno after, after everything he's been through. And, uh, I mean, I bet you he's on top of the world right now, and so am I. All right, congratulations. All right, Great you. game. Congratulations, right. Ed. And we're going to bring in Coach John Bruno right now. In fact, Coach John Bruno, again, Division Three South Jersey Group 3 champions, Ocean City Ed again. They weren't supposed to be able to beat Lakewood. They weren't supposed to get this far in the tournament. Never mind the championships. They got past the number one seed. And, Coach, talk about that initially, the Lakewood game, how that game itself, you, you weren't supposed to beat that number one seed, how that helped you really give you confidence for this game. We weren't supposed to win the night either. Um, it, there's no question in my mind that what happened was that winning at Lakewood and winning at Lakewood was important to us because these kids really believed they could win. Lakewood, Middle Township were all in the same category. To be able to beat them, we knew that if we played well, 
we knew that the other team was going to have to make some mistakes, no question about it. Middle plays their best game, we play our best game. I don't know if we win tonight. Uh, but they make a few mistakes, miss some free throws, you know, we get some steals. Uh, this team just doesn't want to quit. And, and, and people can look at us and we don't look like a pre There's no Division One player out there. There's nobody that dominates. You know, Mike Rao had a heck of a game uh, late in, in the fourth quarter in the overtime. But overall, we just seem to scrap and claw. And we got guys coming off the bench scoring 17. I mean, that just doesn't happen unless it's a team that just does not want to lose. I was going to say that with that, Gil Ferrari, who was such a big, important role in your beating Lakewood, a little bit of foul trouble today, so he had to sit in the bench, so talk about that bench a little bit more. I mean, they really stepped up big. And let's not forget we lost Jay Toscano to an ankle injury, who's really been the rock of, uh, as far as our team handling the ball. And, and losing him, uh, it was killing him on the bench. I wanted to put him back in, but I, you know his health means a lot more to me. And then Eric Dalton stepped up and really realized that he was going to have to go to distance, and he knocked down some jumpers, got some steals. The charge late in the game was absolute key. Uh, I just don't know what else to say. I don't want to miss anybody or forget anybody, but you pick anybody on that team tonight, and somewhere along they had some hand on this win. Okay, just about six seconds on the clock. Ryan Reich is dribbling the ball up. I talked to him about it. Mike Rao, what was going through your mind? It seemed like one of those shots where you're saying no, but once it goes in, it's, it's, uh, talk about the feeling. I, I, I mean, you I haven't won know. anything yet. You're I don't know up. because at this point, you know, you're down three. you got to do it. I mean, with six seconds left, you don't have time to set something up, and I've always been an advocate. You'll get a better shot putting the, you know, better shot pushing the ball up the court without a timeout, uh, and then you just take your chances. And you know, it's March Madness time, and and the next week we'll see about ten of those, and and hopefully we'll just put one of those on our highlight reel too. We'll talk about we don't want to get political, but early in the season it looked like you might not have been back. How much more gratifying does I know the papers you said no, nah, no, nah, but it would almost seem like you know, uh, you know, any comment I might have made to think about it, I just look at these kids. I mean, I'm here, they're here. We just want a South Jersey championship. I think it really matters to me what happened last summer. I don't know what happened yesterday. So I'm just happy what's going to happen on Wednesday. All right, congratulations, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Right, and again, South Jersey, Group 3 champions. Ocean City, they couldn't do it. But guess what? They're number one in South Jersey in all of Group 3. Back to you, Ed. All right, Mickey, thank you very much. And a great job on our post game. A lot of pandemonium on the court. Mickey helped run everybody down and get everybody together. Very happy ending here, Tad. We've said it again. This was not a case where sometimes you see an underdog come in and the other team has to kind of not play the game. This wasn't the case today. Middle Township did not play poorly by any means. Ocean City played as well as they could. They earned the championship. They had to do it against a great team. And it's just a team by that, that quite simply just got on the roll at the right time. And with their head coach, a guy who almost didn't come back at last year, does come back this year. And his team gets on the run at the right time. And then they come away with a championship. And, you know, if you look at everything that's gone on and everything that's happened and how far this team has had to come, Tad, you know, I don't think anybody except for Ocean City expected them to be at this point. Ed, I didn't know what to expect when we came into this game tonight. It, it was just going to be a, a very pressure-filled game for Ocean City, knowing that they lost over 20 points to the team the first time they played Middle Township. And they come out here tonight at halftime. They're dead even. They did their job there. And then... They get near regulation, and you almost get the feeling when you get that miracle half-court shot and Reich buried it, that it's going to be your night. And still, you have to go into overtime and fight for another four minutes. And I'll tell you what, you really have to tip your caps to this Ocean City team. Ed. They did everything they had to do to win. They almost played the perfect game. Tremendous job. If you couldn't have scripted any better, it certainly made for great theater. One of the greatest games maybe ever played in South Jersey championship history. A group three final that had everything you'd want to see if you like great high school basketball. And it had a Cinderella finish. Ocean City with a miracle shot to tie it. And then down by five in overtime comes back to beat Middletown.